It is time to act. Kada it naguwu. For love. Kusakhan. Courage. To wu tsatsin. For solution. Ye u dutsane. Wush hunt is tea. A vision of strong communities, um, basically getting to the place where they um, can be a real human being. And what that means is to be a good relative. And, you know, we in the Native community know what that means. Alaska Native, American Indian, and Pacific Islanders are coming into the light after long darkness of colonization and oppression. With epidemics, alcoholism, boarding schools using assimilative practices based on mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, and sexual assault. This darkness has lasted in some of our communities for over 500 years, and we have still persisted. Even our parents and grandparents living today were part of the boarding school's attempts to kill the Indian to save the men. Yet we are still here. It speaks to our strength. The deep-rooted prayers and intentions in our DNA were placed there by our ancestors to carry us through these dark times. The effects of historical and intergenerational and persisting trauma are described as disparities. But we know that these are just symptoms. To heal from this is not a mystery. It isn't magic. It is just a process. The Arctic Winds Healing Winds nonprofit is helping communities with this process. The Leadership for Results project is based on Alaska Native values, teachings, and emphasizes that strong leadership from all levels of society is a key requirement in addressing issues that require substantial change. The project was piloted in 2015 with a group of Alaska Native leaders to help them strengthen their response to domestic violence sexual assault in their villages. The program brought together 15 key individuals from three villages as the first cohort, with the overall goal to enhance and strengthen the leadership capacity around historical trauma, specifically domestic violence and sexual assault and child abuse. This process focuses on personal growth, bringing out their natural leadership skills, building them into community change agents. What's their gift? What's their skill? Where's their part in their community? How they could help their community? But you know, first they have to help themselves. I went through treatment and being hospitalized for it and homeless and even incarcerated. And I thought I could not come out of it. I was in a dark place and I felt hopeless. But you know, when I discovered I was gonna be a father, I had put in my mind, I have two choices. I could either be an alcoholic and a poor father, or else I could be a good father. You know, to me, miraculously, I don't know how it happened. I, through all I struggled, I just gave it up. And you know, I think in our communities, there's a lot of gifted people. I'm really hoping that those people discover that because then they could reach out in their community and help. Through this process, you gather a team of people, identifying those who are ready to step into their leadership skills, naming their challenges, identifying solutions, and finding a path to healing. I knew that the Lord was planning my life before retirement. I was going to just sit home, be but it didn't work that way. 
Mm -hmm. Two weeks after I retired, I was down Howard Brooks camp teaching children beadwork and mm -hmm. telling them about making choices in life. And and then I told them that I love them all because they were trouble, you know, and crying. And we we started having so much fun. And then I realized I got a gift mm -hmm. to be there, being a grandma, no matter what color the kids are, I'm still their grandma. They get to a place where they build trust and are able to find their voice. Jelly! Jelly, jelly! Jelly, jelly, jelly! <laughs> jelly, 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 jelly sandwich. <laughs> There's an action learning project that asks them to go back to their communities with five questions. These five questions help them to identifying themes from the data and identifying solutions and how to implement them. Then the community can step forward with unified goals, empowering them to step into their healing path, not only for themselves, but for their children. The children which are their hope, their future, and their heart. It's time to nurture our children, to make sure our children are safe, um, to grow up in happy homes, um, where they know they matter, where they know they're loved. What they do is they go back out into their community and they talk to people and say, okay, so from the data that we gathered, we identify themes. And then they go back and they share that information with the people in their community. And they get to the place where they're talking to the people in their community and they're saying, so what are we going to do about it? and they get to a place where they're coming up with their own solutions. No one can go into community and say, you have to do this. They, you know, it's like, it's, a, it's meaningful because it comes from within and it um, solidifies their sovereignty. The opposite of love is fear. And we've lived, we've given that way too much power for too long. It is time for healing. Arctic Winds Healing Winds gives us an opportunity to create a change that addresses domestic violence and sexual violence. It gives the communities the opportunity to develop individual and personal leadership so that they can support each other through that process and create a vision for a vibrant, healthy community. Like our ancestors' ways of being, it is time to be good relatives. Julian da bitcheria reitstun ilagut kdar nachriuk.